Today we're going to talk about the British grenades of 1915. These aren't widely known, but the M15 and M16 ball and lemon grenade were used widely and unsuccessfully and pulled out of use in 1915 to be placed by the mills. It's basically a throwback to what had been around for 400 years, and that's a cannonball, a cast iron ball, uh, filled with, in this case, ammonia um, explosive. And the first version of this uh, was used in the Dardanelles in Gallipoli, and there's a rare version that was uh, actually cast in Malta um, for use in Gallipoli, and it had a fuse that was usually lit by cigarettes, and it was pretty crude. I believe that one was black powder. But these aren't much better. Uh, there is, uh, they're about three inches across, they're cast iron, and they had uh, about 600 grams, I believe, of ammonial in them which was too much. It blew these apart and there, was n where there were no fragments to hurt anyone. So they, re they filled them uh, one third with sand, I believe, and then they gave a better fragmentation if you get them to explode. They have what's called a Brock fuse on them, uh, which was supposed to be an advancement over the cigarette and the lighter thing, which worked in the dry climate of Gallipoli during the summer in Turkey. But uh, what happens here, if you can see, is you pull up on these two things, taking off the lead cap, and you'll expose a striker. And that striker, this would be held flush, uh, and those tucked up in uh, when it was being delivered. Uh, but that striker had to be hit against something like a wristband, if you can imagine, um, and then thrown if you get it lit. This, this fuse was supposedly waterproof. Uh, it's hard to throw, hard to get a grip on, and it's basically a shot put. It's heavy. Someone could throw it about 15 uh, meters, uh, I believe, if they were lucky. So, they came up with this. This is the 1915 uh, Lemon, or it's actually the number 16 grenade. It was a refinement of the number 15, and somewhere on here there's the rel remnants of a date. This one had a brass plug you can barely see there in the bottom for filling and this is a uh, it had a smaller internal volume better fragmentation they didn't have to put sand in there and it was easier to hang on to and throw the problem again was this brock fuse this is a different version of the brock fuse that i'll open it up this was supposedly waxed paper this is a reproduction of course none of those really survived or if they are they're in museums never seen a real one and that is what was inside of your waterproof fuse, and you struck that against your wristband that had some kind of flint on it, I guess, metal there. And then you had four seconds, I believe, on these. Interesting point on these, I'll show you pictures at the end. Uh, they had five or nine second fuses. Nine seconds was four catapults or trebuchets. They threw these at the enemy with old-fashioned uh, spring-loaded catapults. Not very effective. Uh, the Battle of Luz in September 1915. Uh, they knew this was a stopgap measure, both of them. And by September 1915, they were actually cranking out 200,000 of those uh, number 15s a week. And I don't know the numbers of the uh, lemon grenades. They are a little bit rarer. Uh, they knew they were going with the Mills bomb. Here's a Mills bomb, but we'll talk about that next time in some detail. Here's what the number... 15 looked like when it came to me. That's one from a museum. That's a 16 in mint condition. Uh, so they look a little bit different. Mine aren't in mint condition. It's very difficult to find in mint condition. The Battle of Luz is interesting uh, because of the use of, of these, as I mentioned. Also, some people like Kipling's son was killed there. Uh, Siegfried Sassoon and Robert Graves both fought there as officers. As officers in the Welsh Fusiliers, both of them mentioned their books I showed there in humorous and tragic terms, the failures of the 15 and 16 grenades. They were abandoned in November 1915. 18 of 20 of them failed to explode during the Battle of Luz. And here, as promised, are some pictures of those crazy catapults they were throwing the number 15 with. As always, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Comments and trolling below.